Just a minute, <laughs> I've just had a fizzy drink. <laughs> right. I'm talking to Nick. Nick, where did you volunteer and what did you do? I had the uh, very great honour of being the first volunteer ever for People in Places and uh, I didn't discover that until uh, I was out in South Africa on the first assignment because their, their work had been so professional it seemed as if they'd been sending volunteers all over the world for, for some time. But in fact uh, I had a month in a black township in uh, Cape Town working in a school of 1800 high school there and living with a local family. And then after that, uh, having enjoyed that so much, I spent a month in Chittadai uh, School in Dergar in Rajasthan. What were the highlights of your um, many trips, Nick? The highlight, I think, is overcoming the uh, apprehension, perhaps, that uh, one has, understandably, when you sort of you start a a volunteer experience uh, and then finding that you are settling in the class, you get, you get to know the class and that you are eventually feeling that you are doing something uh, worthwhile. And what did you consider to be the greatest challenges of volunteering? The greatest challenges partly, at my age anyway, um, I'm over 70 now, <laughs> uh, is, is stamina. Um, you're living in the third world and uh, the conditions sometimes, although we're the places that we stayed in were luxurious often, um, actually getting to school, walking down through the valley, sort of a half an hour each way, um, was challenging, certainly on the way back up the hill at the end in uh, Nepal. Uh, in uh, Chittadai school, little village school in Rajasthan, it was half an hour in a jeep, and then you were there all day long, and then uh, it was sort of cricket afterwards, the rounders or uh, frisbee with the kids afterwards until they eventually let you go. So it was a long working day and uh, you needed to be physically fit. What is the most important piece of advice that you would give potential volunteers? I think probably the need to be flexible. After all, we are dealing with the third world and uh, you never quite know what's going to happen. So I find that um, after four visits, it's best not to go out with too many preconceived ideas about what you're going to do. Um, don't bank on doing anything um, you know, that you've set out to prepare. Wait and see how the situation is and then try and adapt to that, to the requirements which you may not have been told about beforehand as quickly as possible. And finally, why did you choose People in Places? I heard about People in Places because I live in Canterbury and their headquarters is in Faversham, just down the road from us. I read an article in the Sunday newspaper about how efficient it was, although it was only just starting up. And I like the concept of total transparency. You knew what was going to happen, you knew where your money was going to go to. And uh, Kate and Sally are superb administrators. That's why I chose People in Places. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you.